Hello, my convicts and convicts, just yes, a designer like a convict bringing you guys and gals, yes, another video. So I got this message here from Ar Arthur Corian. I do apologize, Arthur, if I said your name wrong. And he was talking in regards to a PC and what you should do for what are the best settings, like for a gaming PC or a laptop. I said, can you be a bit more specific just in case I wasn't sure? And just said, well, what settings would you take off or on before you start Apex on a high end? or low end PC, like either get max FPS or if I want quality. Well, salute to you, Arthur. Thank you very much for the message. If you ever do, people ever want to ask me something or you want me to do a video, do feel free to put it in the comments like Arthur did here. I don't mind. It gives me ideas. It gives me something to do. So thank you very much. Salute to you. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tell you a few things that I would recommend that you do. Now, you don't have to actually do this if you don't want to, but I'll give you the option. And these are kind of some things that will help not only with specific games, but just games in general or using any applications and stuff and things like that. If you're going to do it as a, as a, you know, across the board sort of thing, as a broad, across the board sort of thing that you should be probably looking into. So number one is your BIOS. I recommend if you are competent enough. Now, if you're not, and you don't like the idea of going into your BIOS, then you can completely skip the BIOS part. That's absolutely fine. Just go forward a little bit and you'll skip. And uh, yeah, no worries. If you're sticking around, then uh, let's explain a little bit about this. So this, as you can see, here's a B550 Aorus Elite version two. That's the board I have. I've got four sticks of memory running at 2133 from Corsair eight gigabyte. I do have my XMP profile enabled. XMP profile basically is the overclocking speed that the manufacturers give you when you actually go to purchase the memory in the first place. So if you go into Amazon and you find some memory and it's coming from Corsair or whoever else that you're buying it from, they normally advertise the speeds at the speeds that they overclock at. That is safe to do so but they'll, they'll kind of tweak it and say, okay, these, these are the best speeds. But what they'll do is they'll send it to you at the lower speed that it was when it was a manufacturer, when they first actually manufactured it. They don't do it, obviously, while they're testing and looking for the speeds and saying, right, these speeds are achievable and it's safe to do so. So if you want to obviously get your advertised speed that you've been given when you pay for that memory, then you can come here to XMP profile and you can enable a profile. Now I've got profile only, there's only one profile on here. So I chose obviously the one that's on here, which is profile number one. If you have more than one profile, then you can test the other profiles if you want to. Just be careful. Uh, if there is any issues and you start to boot loop, which is your computer turning on and turning off, turning on, turning off, turning on, turning off kind of thing or you get like a black screen and nothing happens. All you need to do is just restart your computer and keep tapping your delete key to get into your motherboard as well. Sorry for getting to mention that. To get into your motherboard, uh, to your BIOS, when you first restart, start up your computer, keep tapping the delete key and then it will eventually get into BIOS as well. Once you've got into BIOS, obviously you can then fix your computer and you can load, load the optimized defaults, which will put it back to its, its stock defaults. Or if you know what it is, like if you did change the XMP profile, you know, like four profiles and you chose profile four and it went, it started acting up. And obviously come back and just change the XMP profile and choose one of the other ones because maybe that four isn't compatible with your config, configuration because everyone has a complete different configuration. Also be aware that all biases are different. So there isn't always a easy one fits all kind of thing when it comes to biases. They can all be independently different. So you might have to do a bit of research if you're not clued up or you're not um, quite tech savvy or PC savvy when it comes to bias. So just be careful. If you're not sure, then just skip this part. So that is the easy mode. So if I click next here, you can see I'm touching the XMP profile where it is, just to show you, obviously, that's where it is. Then you can come to advanced mode. Advanced mode will give you more options. You can see there's a lot of stuff here and information to go by. 
just be careful not to touch anything that obviously we don't talk about today and obviously leave it as it is again any problems just come back by hitting the delete key when you restart your computer come back to BIOS and change back anything if uh, there's any problems with your system or just find out where your low default button is which you can find usually under save and exit and then you'll know obviously how to load the defaults on your system which mine is f7 if you're not sure and then you can restart again doing the tweaks or you could just leave it at that point and say no i'm not touching it and that that's that's good then just click on save and exit and it'll ask you if you want to save say save and exit and they all save and exit and then go back to booting windows as normal so this is the advanced page so it's just showing you i'm not touching anything here now the first thing i did change on here is precision boost override uh, overdrive sorry i've set it to auto i recommend also setting it to auto so this lets the pc use it if it needs to it allows the process to run beyond its defined values for pp T, VDD, and CPU. Uh, it basically allows it to boost voltages for longer durations and keep keep them at higher durations as well. Obviously, the PC will only do it to a point that obviously knows how to do that if you put it at auto. So I recommend putting this to auto. Next one, obviously, is the extreme memory profile, which is XMP. This is where I've changed it. So if you come here, you can actually change the XMP profile here. I don't know if you can do it in easy mode. Possibly you can do it in easy mode. If not, obviously you just come here to advanced under tweaker. And then obviously you can get to that as well, which is on the same place where the precision boost overdrive as well. Then just choose the profile and then obviously continue on. Next one, I came here to advanced CPU settings. So you click on advanced CPU settings. Then it'll bring you here to something called global C state control. I disabled this. Basically, this is a power saving feature where it'll put your computer into a C state. And you don't want it to do that. If you're not using the computer, just make sure it's turned off and make sure it's turned off by the back of your power supply. Just turn it to the off position so that it's not still continuing to idle and use up power. So if you ever turn off your computer, just make sure you turn off the power supply at the back as well and it'll cut all power to your pc you'll notice if you've got anything that shows lights which i do like a um mouse or uh my no xlr mini the lights will turn off it because it completely cuts all the power and it's not going to then use up any important electricity in your home so yeah i definitely recommend disabling that now this one, I'm going to skip this one. I can't remember what SMT was, so we're going to skip that one. SVM. Now this is something that I normally get for my um, virus scanner. So this one, again, I'm going to skip. So just skip this one. IO parts is the next one under settings. So you go to settings and then under IO parts. And then here you've got resize bar is this one here and i put this as auto you want to have resize bar on what this will do is it gives the option uh, to use up the full potential of your memory basically if you're using a newer system so I, I only recommend probably doing this if you're using a newer system thinking about it so if you've got a newer system adding or enabling resize bar can give you more fps and uh, it can help with textures loading textures and doing other components as well speed up a lot of components of your computer as well and definitely give you better, uh, more fps as well i highly recommend having resize bar on if you've got a very old computer i would probably not do it you could probably try it and see what happens it won't break your computer by any means but if it does boot loop or anything like that then obviously it might not be compatible with resize bar only do it if you're on more of a modern computer but i'll leave that up to you that's completely up to you you can skip this one if you want to skip this one that's absolutely fine now this is the bios this i do recommend 
you do is updating your BIOS. Again, you kind of have to know what you're doing. If you're not quite sure, get someone else to do it for you. Having the motherboard up to date with the latest BIOS can be very important because it means that any components that were having malfunctioned or anything that they caught on that needed upgrading or maybe they found a better way to perform you know, to performance through your motherboard by updating your BIOS you obviously get those performance tweaks and updates as you can see here I was on the F16B before and now I'm on the F16C it's very easy to do all you basically do is you go to the website that you need you go find the BIOS version as you can see, I'm here on the version 2. I'm on everything under support. And then you go F16. You download the file. Once you've downloaded the file, it will go into download section. Now, you right-click and obviously extract all. I'm not going to do it because I've already done this. I'm just going to double-click on it. Just assume I've extracted it. And the one you want is this one here, that file only. You only need this one file. And what you'll need is a flash drive. And then you just basically copy this and then paste it into your flash drive. Just that one file there, the B550AEV2.16C or whatever your file is called. Obviously, if you're on a different BIOS to me. And then add that onto your BIOS. On, onto your flash drive, sorry. Plug that into your computer. Restart your computer. Keep tapping delete. And then what you want to do is once you... You do that on here you go to boot and then under boot it'll say flash at the bottom and then you can flash it i think you can even do it from the beginning on here as well from the easy mode you can see that it says flash f8 or q flash again obviously depending on what your board is then just go to that and that will actually bring you then to the same thing you see here and it's got task it asks you for the file you select the file from your your download it should uh, from your device that you're using it should automatically bring up your file your device that you've got plugged in so it'll scan your computer to find the correct place to where it is and then obviously all you need to do then is just make sure that you use the one that says uh, this file name here and it'll say 16c.bat or something of that of that nature and then on this particular board it will actually ask you to check it will check the version to make sure that it's correct then you can run the bios and it'll update your bios just whatever you do when it starts updating do not touch it do not let anyone go near it if you're on a laptop and your battery is low don't do this make sure your battery is fully up fully 100 percent keep your laptop plugged in to the mains then update because if your computer turns off at any point or it crash uh, it switches off for any reason say like the electric cuts off or you have a lightning storm or anything like that uh, you just want to be very careful because if anything like that ha happens or your power cuts it will brick your motherboard so just be aware that you need to make sure it stays on just leave it don't touch it don't try and fiddle with anything or go back into BIOS or anything. Just leave it, let it do what it does. And what will happen is once it's complete, it will actually shut down your computer itself and then it will reboot itself and it will come back on. It may reboot or re uh, it might cycle boot a couple of times once it's done it, but it should just boot up as normal as long as you don't touch it and just be careful. Obviously, make sure you read as much information as you can regarding to BIOS and just make sure you're using exactly what you should be using when doing it. If you're not sure, again, just skip this bit and you should be okay on that. And then once you've done that, that's it. That's all you need to do in regards to BIOS. So a couple of other things you could actually add onto your computer to make sure that your computer is getting all the, all the things that you need in order to run it for games or to be game ready is a couple of things here so number one i would recommend is downloading this code getfancontrol.com which is this here this basically is what i use you can see them both here at the bottom 51 and 37 so 51 
is my uh, is that the that's the CPU and that's the GPU as you can see here. Now my GP my CPU does run a little bit hotter because of the 5950X and it is known for running a little bit hotter. It usually settles around about 42, 45, uh, but generally it does run a bit hotter than normal. And um, as you can see, my GPU is very very cool at 37 because I'm not really using the GPU as much. Just go in here, download version 1.62 or whatever higher version it is at the time. As you can see here, Jay's two cents also said that this is really, really good. I definitely agree. Uh, once you've got it on here, I have actually done a video on this, so I could link that in the description. You basically get this program here, and what will happen is this will speed up your fans based on your CPU or GPU, and they'll actually work in tandem together. They'll mix the speeds of your fans to speed up, and they'll actually do it for both your CPU and GPU keeping both your CPU and GPU very, very cool and the internals of your PC. And it can control all of the fans inside of your PC, every single one, even your GPU. Really, really cool, awesome program. I highly recommend it. And they've even now updated it with themes, tray icons, which I've done here, which is why you can see my temperatures at the bottom here. There's settings that you can up update here so you can start it when it starts, start it minimized, have it as a column. And then there's a bit of information. I do recommend donating to this person if you have a little bit of money, just to say thank you, because they did do it off the back uh, for free. So you can use it for free. I, I recommend, you know, giving a little bit. I have done in the past for this specific product in mind as well. Another few things that you can do here before we go into the game is go to. Um, game mode settings right I have game mode turned on as you can see here I highly recommend turning game mode on because this means that when you're when you're running as you can see optimize your PC for play by turning things off in the background and you can go to the graphics underneath if you go to graphics you can actually choose games and stuff and you can actually choose the performance also, if you go to the top here and where it says change default graphic settings, just know that obviously this is Windows 11. Windows 10 may be a bit different. You click on this, it'll actually show you you've got GPU scheduling and optimization for Windows games. I have these both turned on. These obviously help reduce latency and improve performance. We'll need to restart your PC for these to take effect. This will reduce latency and use advanced features in compatible games by using flip presentation model. You'll need to restart your game for, again, changes to make effect. Then you can go back. If you click on the graphics, you can go back one. What I recommend doing here for any games you get, if it's not in the list, you can browse and find them by just clicking browse. You can then go find it by X Defiant here and then click on X Defiant, click add, and that will add X Defiant to the list, which I did right here for all the games what i would recommend you doing and this also helps with problem if you're having an issue with obs if you use obs and for some weird reason your game capture isn't picking up your game it's not showing the game capture in the background just go to the game go to options and make sure it's under high performance and click save and do that for any games anything that you don't specifically need you can let windows decide as you can see here the camera is under power saving microsoft store is under power saving anything you do want to have high performance and obviously click on it go to options and select it under high performance so on and so forth or just leave it and let windows decide what it should do with that uh, if it should be power saving or whatever obviously games you want them to always be on high performance so once you've done this, we'll now go to display. So if I put display settings, that'll bring display settings up. As you can see, I'm on the two monitor. I have two monitors. I've got this one and obviously the one on the left here. What I recommend doing with these is go down. I turn off HDR. Both my monitors are HDR compatible and able to use HDR. This monitor specifically that I'm talking and showing you right now is HDRI. 
The other one is a 4K HDR monitor that runs at 60. What I recommend is coming down here, going to advanced display, clicking on this, going through each display and making sure that they are correctly set to the correct refresh rates. Make sure that you're on the highest refresh rate that you should be on. 144 VC for this monitor and the monitor to my left, which is my 4K monitor, which is again another BenQ, my EL2870U. This one is set to max, which is 60, but this is a 4K monitor, even though I do run it at 1920 by 1080. The reason why I do that is if I didn't, then this monitor screen would be absolutely huge and this one would be quite small. And then when it comes to me dragging my mouse off and going onto the other monitor, now you can't see it's on the other monitor and coming back, it's a pain because obviously the sizes aren't correct. I like my size of monitors to be the same size as each other. Again, if you want HDR on, you can turn it on. I turn it off because my monitor, when I'm going through the monitor settings itself and I'm setting up certain monitor settings, it's a real pain. I don't know, does it show on here if I do it? No, it won't show, will it? Um, I have it as FPS mode, um, something you can't do if it's on HDR. It'll only let me choose HDRI Cinema, HDRI Game. And it takes off a lot of the options to be able to change, such as like the grades of blacks, uh, the color grades, and so on and so forth. There's certain things that I can't get access to. Plus, FPS mode is obviously designed to play FPS game. And obviously gives me the lowest latency for my monitor, so I can play games and have the best, obviously, FPS possible. So there's that one. Um, I'm just thinking if there's anything else on here I need to show you. I don't believe so. If it does, I'll I'll, I'll come back to it. But at the moment, that's it. So that's all you basically need to do for now. And that will help you to set up. So you've got your cooling, which will constantly keep your PC cool. Not only that, it knows when one part's getting hot and it will ramp up and ramp down. Like I said, I'll add the video to that regarding to it because it goes into a bit more descriptive and I'll show you the fan curves to use. And also hysteresis, which basically means that when it goes, uh, the fans go to a certain temperature or speed up, it will stay at a certain speed until it clears out all the hot air, then it'll slowly gradually come down rather than going sort of really, really fast. And you want hysteresis on because that will actually stop it from going to sort of thing. Get the idea. There you go. That's the, uh, that's the SMR for today. ASMR. So let's go into the game. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about the game now and what settings I use for the game and what you can kind of look out for on here. So bear with me while I'm just loading in. Let me just move this out of the way. So I can't remember what it shows. Come on, EA, what's up with you? What's up with the app? By being weird. There we go. Loaded. I was like, what's it doing? Is it taking its sweet time? Right, so we'll load the game in. I'll pull it up, and then obviously you should be able to see it. And then we'll talk a bit about what I've done in terms of the, um, the graphic settings and what I would recommend you do. So, so far, we've talked about BIOS stuff. That will help obviously across board for any games. Obviously having your Windows up to date as well, I recommend as well. Always check your Windows for Windows updates. Make sure you update and keep your PC up to date as possible, because that obviously will make it run as best as possible. Because if there's any like latest tweaks or any security breaches or anything that needed to be obviously sorted out, you want it to be up to date as possible. So always, always make sure your PC is as up-to-date as you can possibly get it. Right, so here we are in Apex. So I'll show you my settings that I've got here for graphics. 
So if you are not like me and constantly going from one monitor to another monitor, I recommend having this on full screen. Always have it on full screen. I'm going to leave it as borderless window because I like to be able to tab out and move my cursor over. Because what will happen is if I have it on full screen, it actually closes this entire window down, takes me back to my window screen. And then when I click back on, it then makes the screen go blank, takes a second and then it comes back out. It's a pain in the butt. And when I'm constantly trying to move left and right, it's annoying. Obviously all these are kind of self-preference, like field of view, use whatever you feel comfortable with. I put mine to 108. You want this to be on minimal. So you get minimal shake. Now for this, I, dis I disable VSync. You don't want VSync on. VSync will add on to uh, latency. So you don't want any latency from that. And video reflex, I put enable plus boost. I just put enable plus boost just so that the GPUs do run a little bit more um, high end. So it keeps it going high, even though if, if I might be either CPU or GPU bound. I tend to leave it as enable plus boost. Anti-aliasing, I've got minus TSA, TSAA. Uh, the texture streaming budget, I've got mine at three gigabit. But you can obviously use whatever. Obviously, make sure that your computer has at least 16 gigabyte of RAM as it's recommended. Ansatrobic times two. I've got ambient occlusion quality disabled. I've got coverage for like shadows and stuff as low these ones are the main general offender for like cpu and gpu volumetric lighting i have this again off again it's something that will uh take up more gpu you can see what most of them do anyway it, it explains what areas it will affect like cpu or if it's gpu model detail i do have mine on medium uh effects detail i've got that on low because what will happen is if you have lots of effects going on your screen at once, I put the quality on low so that it it's a bit easier to see through certain effects if they've got like weird sparklies and all that in between. It can be kind of annoying to have all these effects going on and having this on high. Impact Max, I disable these. Again, it re reduces the CPU load. As you can see there, turning down will reduce CPU. Ragdolls, I put on medium. It's just how accurate the dead body animations are. Again, it will reduce your CPU load if you turn it down. So up to you if you want, if you're, you know, bothered about ragdoll physics in the game. Um, just discard whatever you're saying now. I don't know. It. Probably because of the video that I did on there. I'm going to change the video to borderless to full screen. And I believe that's it. I believe that's all that there was on there. So obviously if you're wanting better quality graphics, then you obviously want to turn up certain parts of this, like the G the Antitropic. Um TSS TSAA offers as you can see here TSSA uh anti aliasing anti aliasing smooths the image reduces jagged lines and spikes turning this down will reduce gpu load tssa offers the highest anti-aliasing quality with the most stable image and fastest frame rate which is why i like using tsa a lot of these will explain if you just go over them so you just choose obviously what you feel is comfortable enough for you to to run on um and you should be okay on on that just see how it goes a lot of it can be a bit of trial and error um so obviously just choose whatever you prefer but these are what i currently use at the moment if you want to follow along with these then by all means feel free to do so and that's it really that's all i currently use the high recommendation ones obviously that i've said at the beginning i would highly recommend looking into them first and playing with them tweaking them to where you want and then obviously all your games and from then on should be good and you shouldn't have any issues and then it's just basically doing your basic tweaks on your computer just so that it runs with any game 
that any game that you play, or any program that you're running is going to run as efficient as possible um, such as like the game mode having game mode on going to the graphics and obviously changing these can be good as well making sure another thing you could do as well if you go uh, and type in display and then go down a little bit you can go to let me think now is it under advanced display settings i think it is i forgot it's going out of my head now i knew there was one thing i wanted to talk about but can't think of it go into graphics not one of them basically all you need to do is just make sure that you go to um oh windows i know it is if you go to windows update windows updates here what i would highly recommend you doing as well as my last tip for today is go to advanced options on your windows update Then go to delivery optimization. And then advanced options. And you'll come here. So what I recommend you doing. Now, as you all know, when our PCs and we're playing games and stuff and we're doing stuff on the computer, it will continuously have things that will run in the background and it can be really annoying because you'll end up with lagging and you'll end up with problems with your connection or you, you just start stuttering for no reason and you don't know why and it could be that your pc is doing something or downloading something in the background so what i actually did is came here and then what i did is i clicked on percentage i ticked limit how much bandwidth is using for downloading updates in the background and downloading updates in the foreground and i put them down to five percent and then all i did is tick the first one for upload and then i reduced that to five percent and i left it at that and that's all you need to do as the last one on there what this will basically do is no matter how much your pc is doing in the background it'll only use five percent of your internet so it will stop it from ever doing an update that might cause an issue you might have an update pop up that it starts downloading at least it'll only use five percent of your connection and it'll stop it from obviously overtaking and using all your connection up and then you start stuttering and going and crashing or losing a gunfight due to your computer doing something in the background or in the foreground so i highly recommend you do that as well just make sure you go to the windows update and go in there and make sure you add the ability to change it under five percent just tick it and then put it under five percent as i've shown and uh, that will help it from ever taking over your games and obviously causing you problems or issues on there game mode should help towards that anyway on windows 11 and should prevent certain things like that from happening as well and that's it that's all i can suggest that's all i would recommend at the moment there is a couple of other things you can possibly do uh, in terms of making games run better. I definitely highly recommend you doing the Ethernet one, the DNS one, the DNS theory. If you've definitely checked that out before, the DNS theory one, 100% definitely use that. After all the testing and after all the times I've used it, it's made a hell of a difference to my games. If you've noticed and if you haven't checked out my Apex game, the Return to Apex Legends game, or any of my very recent games you'll see that it's made a night and day difference to those games to be able to play and actually win and not feel like i'm shooting someone 15,000 times and yet they still win somehow which makes no sense at all so there you go if that helps you out please like this video sorry it is a bit long but i have to explain it for those who are new so bear with me on that one hopefully you enjoyed please like the video subscribe hit that notification bell also consider joining us. $199 gives you access to emotes, badges, all that cool stuff. 
giveaways in the future for members for my elites as well big shout out and salute to you raf for being elite thank you appreciate you also you can my brain's my brain's just switched off now it's just gone ah. uh, also you get access to the emotes badges giveaways charity work i want to do in the future as well for people with dementia and autism as that's something that's very important to me uh i do play multiplayer games with my elites as well i do prioritize elites over subscribers so if you want to obviously have priority to play in game in the future then by all means we can do that as well uh for anyone who is one of my elites as well um so definitely help yeah it'll be great con you know great um yeah my, my brain today I'm, I'm not editing this i'm not editing it's tough it's tough your brain should work <laughs> But yeah, if you want to help and support, that's one way to do 199. And obviously, like I said, the more people, the more chance we get people in for doing the elites, then there's more chance of them being able to obviously be opted in. So if you want to be part of that and help and support, or like I said, do the charity work kind of gig and help support, or even just helping support me to do what I do, to be able to bring these games, be able to do these tutorials and stuff, and that's one way to do it. It's just one ninety nine, and uh, you'll not probably find it cheaper anywhere else. So uh, yeah, consider it if you want to. But first and foremost, the only thing I would like you to do, if possible, right now or at the beginning or whenever it is, is like the video. That's it. Thank you very much. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully after that answers your questions. If there's something i didn't answer that or is anything else specific you want a video doing on please let me know in the comments if there's anything you want me to go through and i'll be more than happy to do so anyway it is Attic of convicts signing out as always i salute you my convicts and a big thank you to my elites like raf gt spot who are supporting the channel for 199 appreciate you very very much so thank you very much and yeah bye for now